Right. Hi, guys. Okay. Um, this PowerPoint will talk about the lit essay question. I know some of you have been asking um, and clarifying how do you answer a lit essay question. All right. So without further ado, let's start. Now, this presentation will be in four parts. We'll, we're going to talk about assessment in lit. Um, the band descript test, how you're going to be assessed. We're going to do some modeling instruction. Um, we're going to tackle the essay question and then we're going to talk about your assignment, which is, which is the Shroud by Wong Mi. Now let's talk about assessment in the Now in a classroom, how do we show that you have learned? Okay, now firstly, okay, is when you show full understanding through close analysis. Now, what do we mean by close analysis? We mean that detailed examination of a text or close reading. And then you're supposed to show understanding of the ways in which all of the literary techniques or writer's choice of language shape meanings. And then you have to present this, this information in a sensitive and informed personal response and clearly with proper evidence. Now, what are the types of assessment tasks that you will have in lower secondary? Okay, for example, you have your guided essay question, which is largely your poetry. You have guided passage-based essay, which you sort of did in the boy in striped pajamas, and later on this year, you're going to do for the outsiders. You have alternative assessment tasks for your WA, like your blackout poetry. And then sometimes you have reading comprehension just to test your understanding, and that's in MC. Now, what are the types of assessment tasks, your essay basically? All right, so you are to write or you are presented one essay question, which has two parts, part one and part two. You're supposed to respond to each part separately and each part can be answered in two or three paragraphs guided by peel. Now, you don't have to follow the peel structure. It's a guideline. Okay, the reason why we teach you peel is to teach you organization for your um, essay. All right, and know that essay questions are marked holistically as a whole and awarded a mark out of 25. So basically, part one is not 12 marks and part two is not 13 marks. We mark the essays holistically. Now, for example, okay, these are the types of essays that you'll be working on. All right, you have your guided essay question, which is a response to a text okay regarding areas of study all right like plot character style theme setting atmosphere and you are to, and, and you're supposed to write in complete sentences and in paragraphs and you will be given sub prompt sub prompts basically those are the bulleted points below the question you do not need to address the sub prompts directly they are there to help you now, the second type of essay that you will encounter later on is passage-based essay, all right, where you will also have sub-prompts, but these sub-prompts will help you trigger your memory about your learning, all right, and they, they are basically the same thing. They're about um, regarding the areas of study, which is plot, character, style, theme, setting, and atmosphere. So, for example, your assignment, the shroud, okay, that's a guided essay question. And then you have the boy in striped pajamas, all right, and that those are guiding questions as well. All right, so what do the questions focus on? Okay, they normally focus on an incident or an event, a character or the character's motivation, why certain characters do certain things. Setting, which uh, is made up of atmosphere and the mood. Themes, main issues, subject matter, what the text or the story is really about. And the most important is the writer's craft and style. 
um, the intention, the tone, the attitude, language, word choice, okay, which is diction, the choice of imagery, sound, structure. Why, um, why does the author use this? Now, what do the questions look like in the exam? Normally, okay, so I'm going to show you sentence stems, all right? So normally, um, these questions will sound like this. What are your feelings about? What is your impression of? Is a very com um, common question. What do you think is the significance of this event? What makes this passage tense, moving, dramatic, important, significant, memorable, amusing? This is a very popular question as well. How does the writer vividly portray or show or create something? How does the writer use language to, to create sympathy? Okay, yeah, exactly. Okay, to create sympathy. Or how does the writer make you feel certain things? Now, we're in part two. How are you marked? Now, these are the band descriptors. Okay, I have sort of simplified it for you. All right, I'm going to give you a few moments and you can stop the video here. Okay, to actually look through the band descriptors properly. Now, basically, you'll be assessed in four ways. For example, are you answering the question? Do you understand the text? Have you picked out relevant evidence? And is your overall answer clear? All right. Then I'm going to show you the normal acad. This is the express one. Okay, this is the normal academic band descriptors. Okay, so feel free to pause the video to actually look at these band descriptors. Okay, now we'll go here. Model instruction, tackling the essay question. Okay, so I'm going to just um, deal with a very, very simple poem before we go to the shroud. Okay, then I'm going to show you how, how I actually analyze the poem and how I create or, or, or fulfill my answers. Now, the most important thing okay, that we like to tell you as teachers when you receive a poem is annotation, right? So what is annotate? mean okay basically is to keep track of your reading to record your reading okay when you're asking yourself certain questions about setting purpose um, and also to develop your understanding of the literary analysis all right so it's a very very important skill not just for literature but for english as well now how do we annotate or start annotating firstly read the poem once through Make observations. So you find yourself noticing certain things. Now read it a second time and this time annotate the poem by jotting down what you notice about these things. The poem's title. What does the title suggest? The beginning of the poem. What is described in the first line? What does it suggest to you? The lines and the stanzas. What is striking about the arrangement of lines and stanzas? Are there any repeated words or ideas? And if so, what do they emphasize? Unusual or interesting words? What unusual are there? Again, what is the effect? What do they suggest? Connecting words. If there are three to five pairs of words that connect, what idea is emphasized? Sounds. What words contribute to sound in a poem? What overall feeling is created? And lastly, the ending of the poem. What is described in the last line? What main idea stands out at the end? Okay, and remember as you are annotating, look out for lit devices lang and language, basically word choice. Okay, so um, we actually have this um, song. Okay, now some of you might know this song. Okay, um, actually some of you might not know. Um, if you're curious, I actually put um, put the link down below over there. Um, so you can get to know the song better. It's a very nice song. Now anyway, so this poem or this song is from Frozen 2. And it's sung by the main character Elsa. 
All right, so I'm just going to give you a few moments here. You can pause the video if you want to read through the three stanzas here. All right. Okay, so let's start annotating. All right, the words in color are my annotations you will see later on. Now, firstly, okay, you see the ones in the blue. Now, this is me asking myself, so who is this you? The voice that the persona, which is Elsa, hears, it seems to be calling out to her, asking her to go somewhere, inviting her to do something. So I've highlighted or underlined the words you, your, your, and these all pertaining to the voice that she hears. Now you see the words highlighted in green. I feel the persona is trying to ignore the voice that only she hears. She thinks that if she entertains or follow this voice which is calling to her, she's making a big mistake. So you see all her words like, um, I'm blocking out, I'm afraid of what risking, what I would risking, what I would be risking if I follow you. So um, what if I make a big mistake? All right, she doesn't want to ruin the, what good she already has in her life. And this voice provides a lot of uncertainty and doubt. So this one, okay, I actually highlighted what is a siren. Now in Greek mythology, sirens were dangerous creatures who lured sailors with their enchanting music, um, leading them to their deaths due to rocky seas. All right, so they're sort of mermaids. So so she compares the voice to a siren, right? Which means this voice to her is very alluring, very exciting, that is leading her somewhere. Is it somewhere dangerous? We don't know, but she feels that sort of excitement. So the one in orange, okay, tells me that the persona admits that she feels that she's meant to be somewhere else, not within these walls, confined, right? She feels the urge to explore, to go forth to have another adventure. Now the title, okay, um, emphasizes the persona's desire to venture out of her comfort zone. All right. So the overall mood of the poem is, um, you, you can't see it here, but the overall mood of the poem is mysterious yet exciting. Now these is a framework that you can use to help you have a deeper analysis. I call this Specs and Slims. Now, um, you can pause this video, all right, and use this framework to analyze any poem. And I promise you, um, your understanding of any poem will be much clearer, all right, if you take these steps. So basically, we look out for subject, subject matter, um, the purpose, the emotion, and then writer's craft. Now craftsmanship, which consists of structure, language, imagery, movement, and sounds, is very important, um, especially for the second part, or part two of the essay, where, where the question asks you to talk about writer's craft. So feel free to pause this video every time you analyze something. Okay, so let's go back to the song or the poem from Frozen. So what is your impression of the persona? And the second question, what is the mood of the poem? How does the poet convey this mood? All right, so let's look, uh, let's analyze the questions. Now, whenever you see the word impression in, an, in a question, okay, it means it's asking you, what are your thoughts and feelings towards the persona? Um, we deduce that she's conflicted. What is the mood of the poem? How does the poet convey this mood? From our annotation, we have determined that the mood in the poem is mysterious yet exciting. When we see the word convey, okay, it means that um, how does the poet express or show this mood in the poem? And this is where craftsmanship the writer's um, uh, craft is very important because this is where we look at language and some of the literary techniques that the poet uses. All right, so these are the literary techniques and language. So unusual elements, who is the voice? 
All right, comparing mythical creatures like the siren to the you in the poem, repetition of questions in the poem, adding a sense of doubt and uncertainty, yet a thrill of the unknown, tension, what she wants versus what's holding her back, and suspense, what's in the unknown. We don't know, and this adds the excitement. So all these points contribute to the mood. Now, I don't have to address all these points in my answer, but I can pick two. All right. Remember, okay, to structure your answers properly. Again, you don't have to follow peel, but it helps to organize your answer. All right. So remember, so just to um, refresh your memory, peel is point. E, the two E's are evidence and explanation. I tend to um, interchange between the two is all right, and then link to tie it up together. Okay, so this is my suggested answer for, for part one. This is just um, one peel paragraph. Okay, so my impression of the persona is that she seems to be in a dilemma. So this is my point. Okay, so it's in a different color. And the ones in green are my explanation and the ones in purple are my evidence. Okay, so she seems to be struggling between staying in a comfort zone and venturing out on her own. We see her resisting the voice and the whispers, wanting them to go away so she can go about her day. She doesn't want trouble and it is suggested that she is afraid of risking losing the good she already has in her life. At the same time, the persona reveals that she does have the desire to go beyond the walls that seem to confine her. We can infer that she does, in fact, wants to continue having adventures, especially when she thinks that she's meant to be someone else, in this case, in the unknown. All right, and then I end off. Hence, this tension between what she deeply wants versus not wanting to change anything illustrates the internal conflict that she is experiencing. Now, look at the way I actually weave my evidence inside my answer, all right? I don't put my evidence alone or as a sentence, and my evidence are short, okay? My pieces of evidence are short, and I make sure they are impactful, all right? So in your essay, that's what you do as well, okay? Show you suggested answers for part two, okay? The same thing, okay? I'll let you read. You can pause the video. Again, all right, you can see, all right, um, my point, my explanation, and then my link. And the ones in purple are my evidence. Now, you notice that I don't um, pack so much evidence in my answer. Basically, I make my evidence work for me. All right, so when you do your assignment, make sure that the evidence that you pick out are effective enough to carry your argument. Okay, now let's go um, into your assignment, which is the Shroud by Wong Mei. All right, have a read through. Okay, so before we annotate, okay, let's just revise what is annotation all about. Okay, again, later we'll read the poem once through. And then when you make um, observations, okay, notice this, these things, the title, the beginning of the poem, the lines and the stanzas, repeated words or ideas, unusual or interesting words, connecting words, sounds, the ending of the poem, all right? Annotation is crucial in literature. And then you look out for literary devices and word choice, all right? So let's delve into the annotation. Cool. All right, so again, the ones in color are my comments, okay? For example, let's go through the title. The Shroud. Now, the Shroud is defined as a cloth in which a dead person is wrapped for burial. But again, I'm asking myself, what is the Shroud referring to here? Is the poem literally about a dead person or something else? Later on, we'll realize that the Shroud actually symbolizes um, her school uniform. 
or represents her school uniform which symbolizes her former self. All right, so let's look at the comments in blue. Taken off together with the old school uniform. Now, this is personification, right? The childish quality is literally taken off like a piece of clothing, so um, which is her old uniform. All right, and then we see repetition of dear old uniform, dear old uniform. Again, this emphasizes how this um, this uniform or her past is very dear to her. All right, now look at the comments, okay, in pink. Words like never, folded, locked up forever, crying louder and louder, okay. These words, okay, um, shows a finality, emphasizes um, the very regretful and sad mood. Crying and howling expresses a, a sorrowful experience, again emphasizing how sad the persona is um, leaving her childhood or letting go of her childhood. And then we see my comments in orange, all right, where we see we see the persona remembering certain things like the little girl with the pigtails, her dress always too long, thousand naughty little ways. Um, the persona is moving on from a happy childhood. The poem evokes a sense of nostalgia and a person and the persona does not want to let go of the memories. Okay, lastly, um, look at the words, shall I cry? Or must, why must we grow up? Okay, I feel these um, these sentences or these questions again highlights the confusion, the, um, the, the unwillingness to let go of a past. And again, the tone is of sadness and regret. All right, so when you annotate your poem, okay, make sure it looks like this. Make sure you try your best to actually comment on any interesting that you might find. Okay, these are the questions that, that were presented to you. Okay, let's just break it down. Now, when we see the word represent in a poem, it means it's asking you what does it symbolize? So what does the old uniform symbolize here? And also when we see the word portrayed, okay, what does it mean? How is it shown or expressed in the poem? How does the poet vividly communicate the tone of sadness? And when we see this, vividly communicate means strongly or effectively show or illustrate. And we see this in these literary techniques. So in your essay, you, you can just to, um, choose two. Um, do you want to talk about the descriptions of sadness through word choice? or imagery or punctuation or how the the poet uses punctuation okay i'm going to give you okay the um one suggested answer for part one this is just one paragraph you're supposed to write two all right so look at this again i've color coded my paragraph you don't have to do this in the exams okay but i color coded it according to point elaboration evidence and then link all right, so let's just have a read through. The old school uniform represents the persona's happy childhood. This is shown in the poem which describes the old school uniform as a dear old uniform that reminds the persona of the little childish happiness and a girl with a thousand naughty and silly ways. The use of the word dear in describing her uniform suggests how the persona's childhood was a happy memory that she looks back with affection. Look at how I am zeroing in on the word dear. Okay, that is analysis right there. I'm not narrating the story, the story of the poem, but I'm analyzing the word choice by the poet. In addition, by linking the uniform with little childish happiness as well as a history of the persona in a thousand naughty silly ways, it tells us that the uniform was a symbolic was symbolic of a happy childhood enjoyed by the persona. In conclusion, the old uniform represents a happy childhood that was experienced by the persona. All right, okay. As you can see, okay, I actually repeated my evidence, okay. I did not introduce new evidence or pack like 20, 10 pieces or 20 pieces of evidence in my paragraph. I make sure the evidence are, are actually relevant and effective in um, illustrating my answer.
you can pause here okay for you to copy this is for you to copy but for the second paragraph and for the second um, question you must do by yourself all right okay so over to you all right so it's your turn to complete the rest of the assignment remember to look at the band descriptors okay um, earlier in this video and look at this checklist firstly um, as you do your essay go through this checklist have you annotated the poem effectively do you use specs and slims to help you have a deeper understanding have you highlighted the question requirements or broken down the question are your paragraphs structured or organized which is peel have you selected good evidence to support your arguments are your sentences and expressions clear or did you weave in the quotations in your sentences? Okay, are, are your evidence, are your pieces of evidence um, woven together in your sentences? Okay, to ensure proper flow of reading. Okay. Okay, that's it. Okay, thank you for watching. Okay, feel free okay, to use this video on any um, poem. Um, and, it's, and go back to the earlier slides if you would like to read. Uh, to revise some of the things that I discussed over here. All right. Okay. All the best. Stay healthy.